There's no denying the joy we feel when we interact with a dog. Sure, they slobber and shed, but it's worth it for the unconditional love. In fact, having a pet is so comforting. In 2019, there were nearly 200,000 people seeking registration for their pet to be considered an emotional support animal. But these dogs, as much emotional support as they do give, are actually highly trained official service dogs. They train for up to two years to support victims of post-traumatic stress disorder through the organization Got Your Sick Support Dogs. We just got asked yesterday by somebody coming in, they're like, what is Got Your Six? Why, what does that have to do with dogs? Executive Director Nicole Lanahan explains the phrase Got Your Six comes from World War II when fighter pilots would give their location in terms of a clock. When someone was at your six o'clock, that meant they had your back. And the slang stuck, not just for military, but also for first responders. And so we knew I wanted something that military, law enforcement, first responders would know, hey, that's, I know that slang. This, this organization is for me. It's, this is my organization. Honestly, in the beginning, which is so funny, I was the biggest skeptic of PTSD service dogs. I was thinking, OK, you guys, you just want to take your dog on an airplane. Nicole has been training dogs for over 20 years in various capacities from narcotic dogs for the military to diabetic and mobility assistance dogs. But after several people contacted her with requests for PTSD support dogs, she started to investigate the details. And so to understand what the dogs do, you really have to understand PTSD and, and how it affects your brain. Historically referred to with terms like shell shock or battle fatigue, PTSD has been affecting soldiers since the creation of war. In fact, references to symptoms of PTSD even date back to survivors of saber-toothed tiger attacks. But the problem is, in a world where saber-toothed tiger attacks are pretty few and far between, the psychological responses are still the same. For example, I was supposed to do an interview with somebody who applied for a service dog, and they never showed up. About an hour after they missed their appointment, I get a phone call, and the, it was them sobbing, saying, look, I tried to come in. I really did. I need this dog, but I saw a cardboard box on the side of the road, and I had to turn around. You and me were like, cardboard box? But to them, they know that over in the desert, that's where they would hide bombs, is in trash. And so they're driving past the trash, and frontal lobe says, hey, we're in America. There is no bomb in that box. But the amygdala speaks up and says, hey, do you want to risk it? Is it worth risking your life? And ultimately, no. So I'm going to turn around and go home where it's safe. But even with understanding the science and logical explanation behind PTSD, there was still the question of how a dog could be of assistance. Are they just dogs that make you feel better? It has to be more than that because the Americans with Disabilities Act says a service dog has to be able to perform a medical task in order to be a service dog. So I'm thinking, what is this task? They have to do something. So we're just doing nothing while that cat walks around. So I like to say that training is actually quite boring because teaching neutral is doing nothing in the face of a distraction, right? And that's the first thing we start with is solid, pristine obedience. From there, we move into their anxiety alerts, which include a lower body alert, such as a foot tap. Yes. What a good girl. If I'm crying. <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> very nice. And um, they do nightmare interruptions and retrieve items for us. So the simple answer is PTSD service dogs pay close attention to their owners. And when they notice a nervous behavior such as foot tapping, knee bouncing, or sighing, they alert their owner by interrupting the nervous behavior. But of course, with the complexities of PTSD, the relationship between the dog and the owner is a little bit deeper. Sometimes I have emotions that I don't even know. I don't even know how to categorize them. Like, I'm not mad, I'm not sad, I, but I, I feel something and I don't know how to verbalize it or I don't know how to, how to 
get somebody to understand how I feel like. Um, and Arkham just gets it. I, I don't know, he feels it and he'll, next thing I know he's on my lap or he's flipping upside down on his back and doing something stupid and making me laugh. Coming from a long line of Navy veterans, Andy Canning took a while to realize he needed help managing the difficulties that come with returning home from service. And I, I did therapy and things like that. And one of the first things I told my therapist was, uh, I don't want to be on medication. I want to feel and I want to, to feel those things and emotions, um, but I want to learn how to control them. He said, well, if you can find somewhere that'll do it, I think a support dog would be a great thing. So I did some research, did some research, and um, ended up finding out that a friend of mine from school was a trainer here at Got Your Six Support Dogs. The first thing you have to fill out the application, it's like 20, 25 pages long, and you first print it out and you're like, oh my gosh, it's gonna take forever. Well, it's that way for, for me personally, it's that way for a reason um, to even get started in the process, you have to want to get better, right? So you gotta do the legwork. That legwork includes references and insight from your therapist, a primary care physician, your spouse and or family members. And after the application is received and approved, there's about a year long wait list to get matched with the dog. But once you're in, Got Your Six provides more than just the dog. So we make sure with our applicants that they're already, one of our requirements is they're already participating in therapy, but when they're here, one of the things again that makes us different is they get a two week trauma resiliency program with the service dog. This 14 day trauma resilience program includes a 24 seven therapist on site, workshops on mindfulness and stress relief techniques, and of course, lots of interaction with your dog. And all of this is at no cost for the veterans. So when they're here, we cover the cost of their meals, their uh, hotel. We also make sure that they have all of the supplies they need for, for their dogs, the dog's care for, for the entire year. And all of that costs us, when it's all broken down, it costs us $25,000 per dog. So that, since we are a nonprofit, we, we have to fundraise all year in order to make sure. Last year we placed 10 dogs. We always like to increase. We haven't been able to increase because of COVID. COVID was rough, but we're thrilled to say we haven't had to decrease either, which was a scary possibility. A lot of their support comes from donations, both monetary and supplies. But Got Your Six is a big advocate for the PAWS Act, which provides government funding for pairing service dogs with eligible veterans. Ever since the PAWS Act happened, unfortunately we've seen a lot of backyard garage organizations pop up hoping to get some government money for training a dog, and we've already seen and heard horror stories. So we want to make sure that Anybody that's looking for a service dog, even not through us, just making sure that the organization that you go look is accredited. These non-accredited organizations are most likely offering services because the demand is just so high. And it's predicted that the demand will only increase with the effects of the pandemic on first responders. But looking at the transformative results, it's a worthy demand to supply. When I start like feeling stuck and I feel surrounded, um, he'll kind of bump me and say, hey, we're all right, let's do this. Uh, he, he keeps me in the moment and, and lets me enjoy my life the way I want to. Prior to this and prior to getting help, I probably wasn't the best human to be around. It's like somebody, not that my family didn't, um, and not that my therapist didn't, but somebody that I have never met before in my life, cares enough to give me a chance. For Living St. Louis, I'm Brooke Butler.